morning. We're ready to begin our morning worship service. Those who will ask that you'll go ahead and stand to your feet for the doxology. Let us praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen.
first saw the light and gave our lives to Jesus. Amen. 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 As our Savior and now reigning as our Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, most gracious and kind God, we come before you this morning just to lift up your holy and majestic name. Oh God, we come to you this morning realizing that you are worthy of all of our praise. And so God, we come to give you the praise that you're worthy of. And so God, as we have assembled ourselves together, singing and declaring that truly for the believers who have accepted your son, Jesus, as their personal Savior, it was our belief that at the cross is where he shed an innocent blood. He died so that we might have a right to eternal life. And so now, oh God, we are truly happy, not just today, but every day, because we now have a place of eternal rest. Oh God, we come this morning realizing that we have sinned. We have fallen short of the glory. And so God, we come firstly asking for forgiveness of our wrongdoings. Asking, oh God, that you forgive us of all of our iniquity and sin that we have committed, yes, by thought, word, and deed. And God, as we ask you to forgive us and receive the forgiveness that you offer us. Let us offer that same forgiveness to one another. Let us forgive those who have trespassed against us. Now, O oh God, we come asking that by way of your Holy Spirit that you would be with us throughout this worship service. Not only in this service, O oh God, but when we depart from here, your same presence by way of the Holy Spirit will continue to rest and rule and abide with us. God, we come this morning lifting up those who are less fortunate than us. Somebody had a desire to come out to the house of worship this morning, but for health reasons and other conditions, they could not assemble themselves together in person. And so, oh God, we lift them up this morning. We lift up those, oh God, with a bowed down head who are in stress and in distress. Oh God, we lift up those who are grieved this morning. Those who have lost loved ones and at a point that they don't know what to do or even how to do what it is that they need to do. But I pray, O oh God, that they will lift up their eyes unto the hills from which cometh their help and realize that all the help they need cometh from you. O oh God, we pray for those who are sick physically, mentally. O oh God, that you would heal their bodies. We lift up those behind prison bars and in jail houses and those who are even in captivity in their own homes and some in their own bodies, oh God. We pray for those, oh God, without food, without clothing, without shelter this morning. Asking, oh God, that you continue to make a way somehow. And we realize, oh God, that we are the way. We are our brothers and our sisters keepers. And so, oh God, we pray that you touch the hearts and the minds of all believers that we would come together and learn how to work in unity and not division. For we realize that where your presence is and where there is unity, oh God, the scripture tells us it's there that you command a blessing. And so, oh God, unify us on every level so that we can walk in that blessed place. Oh God, we pray now for unspoken requests, things that we know not what to pray for, but you are an all-knowing God. You know our hearts, you know our minds, even our secret intentions. 
And so, O oh God, the unspoken request this morning, we lift them up to you and ask, O oh God, if it is your will that you would meet the needs of your people. And then, O oh God, when it is all said and done in this worship experience today, we pray, O oh God, that we would leave this place knowing we've been in your presence and realizing, O oh God, that where your presence is, there is always liberty and freedom. So whatever we came in here with, and those who may be listening by way of social media, that because they stopped by this service, that the word that will go forth, O oh God, in power and in might and yes, in spirit, that it will be a word of deliverance, that when we leave, We'll say it was good for us to be here on today. And we'll forever, oh God, continue to offer you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor that you're so worthy of. It is in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ who is our Savior. He is our Lord, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. It's in his name that we pray and ask these blessings. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord.
hearers and doers of his word. Amen. 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 Those who can, let us stand to our feet for the Decalogue hymn from all that dwells below the sky.
the Lord your God gives you. Lord, have mercy upon us and invite our heart to keep this law. You shall not kill. Lord, have mercy upon us and invite our heart to keep this law. You shall not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us and invite our heart to
pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. And it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Blessed is he that considers the poor, the Lord will deliver him in times of trouble. All things come of thee, O Lord.
stronghold of that battery, battery wagon was never taken after all of that dying. It was still never taken. Okay, though their bravery convinced the skeptical public that blacks would and could fight bravery. As a result, the 54 paved the way. This goes back to 180,000 uh, new soldiers, new black men joining the U.S. forces. forces ultimately turning the tide of the war. Hmm. Now, many of you, I don't know if you remember, but there was a movie in 1989 called Glory mm -hmm. about the 54th Massachusetts resident, okay. starring Denzel Washington, okay. Morgan Freeman, and Andre Brown. And right now, there's a statue in Boston showing Colonel Shaw and the 54th Regiment. That's our Black History Month for the day. All right.
that he woke us up this morning, allowed his breath to continue to breathe in us and through us. What is the goodness of God? Was it looking in your cupboard and finding that you had something to cook and to eat this morning? What is the goodness of God that he allowed us to arrive at the house of worship one more time? What is the goodness of God? Is it that he gave his only begotten son? To suffer death on the cross so that you and I might have a right to eternal life. What is the goodness of God? Is it the fact that he sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost and he's still here now leading and guiding us to all truth and righteousness? What is the goodness of God? Is it that he promised that one day he's coming back to rapture the church, amen, and those who died in Christ will be caught up and those of us who are yet alive, what is the goodness of God? The songwriter said it's chasing after me. Amen. With God Almighty. And so we give him honor, we give him praise on this first Sunday in June. Amen. As we prepare to preach a message this morning. So we ask that you pray with me that God will use me to deliver what I believe is a rhema word. Amen. Amen. So let us pray to Heavenly Father. God, we come before you for no other reason but just to ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to continue to sup with us throughout this worship experience. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in your sight, Lord. You are our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. It is in your son Jesus' name that I pray and ask these blessings and every believer I'll say amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. Say it one more time. Amen. amen. Amen and amen. We read in your hearing for our scripture lesson the 46th number of songs. It is a song written by David. And we will center our message this morning, uh, keying in primarily on the key verse, which would be Psalms 46, number 46, verse number one, according to the King James Version, the new King James Version of this particular text. God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. Uh, when you have time, you go back and read that psalm. It's only 11 uh, verses, but read it in its entirety. But we want to lift this morning from Psalms number 46, verse number 1. I just want to remind us that God is our refuge. Not only is he our refuge, but the psalmist penned and said, and God is our strength. Don't know what you're trying to do this morning, but you're not going to be able to do it without the strength of the Lord. And as you attempt to do it, David reminds us that he is a very present help in times of trouble. Anybody got some issues or situations going on, just want to remind you that God is. Right. He's there. Amen. And, and so David says in verse number two, therefore, he says, we will not fear. Why? Because God is right. our refuge. God is right. our strength. And God is a very present help in time of trouble. Amen. And so we want to look at this psalm and, and dissect it as we go into the message entitled the RSP. God is our refuge, our strength, and our present helper. Amen. Amen. And as as you are relieved at this time. This psalm uh, is a psalm of David, a little history there. Uh, he wrote this as we studied the text to find out... Um, that he, um, this was written, uh, but no, it wasn't a song of David, a song of Korah, the sons of Korah. And they wrote this song 
it was intended um, for women. Uh, when you study the text, you find uh, that it was to the chief musicians. It was a song from the sons of Korah. And the sons of Korah was in charge of what was allowed into the services of the court of the tabernacle. In other words, they were in charge of the work of the worship of service. They were the keepers, if you would, of the threshold. And so, uh, as we studied the text, it says it's a song for Alamoth. I wanted to know what that meant. And when I studied it, it said that uh, this is the only song specifically written for women. Uh, it went on to say that these women uh, were women who were seeking the coming of the Messiah. And discovered that it was only in... Uh, the New Testament that we see two different courts, uh, where the men worship in one court and the women in another, but it wasn't always so. The men and women was much like we are today, worshiping God in the tabernacle together. But in this psalm, he, he starts out by saying, God, he is our refuge, and God, uh, he is our strength, and, and God is a present help, uh, when uh, we find ourselves uh, in trouble. Amen. It uses the word sila uh, two times, I believe, as we read this psalm, which simply means to pause and consider. So as you read it and you see the word sila, it's asking us to pause, to meditate on what was just said, to, to reckon it to our own lives. And so when we, we read that God is... Uh, our refuge and strength and our present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and the mountains uh, be carried into the midst of the sea, and though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains are shaken, uh, we stand in a place where we will not fear. Amen. And so today, just for a few moments, uh, I want to, uh, to preach a message, uh, uh, RSP. Yeah. Uh, I am a teacher, uh, and in the classroom, if we were to use uh, the acronym RSP in the education field, it stands for Resource Specialist Program. Can I help us today by letting us know that God has a resource uh, specialist uh, program for the church, uh, for the body of believers. Uh, when we look at RSP from an educational standpoint, we find that the program is designed to provide specialized support uh, to students uh, with learning and behavior challenges. I'm talking to saints this morning and perhaps ain'ts, but I want to let you know that if we are in the body of Christ, just like the classroom, uh, stop by to let you know that God uh, has a resource uh, specialist program that's designed exactly for you and I. I know I'm right about it. The program says that it aims to empower these students to succeed in the classroom so that they can become confident and independent learners. Stop by to tell the church this morning, so it is in the classroom, so it is in the house of the Lord, so it is in the word of God for believers. The resource specialist teacher work with those pupils, uh, those students uh, who are identified as ones who have an IEP, uh, an individualized education uh, plan for that student. Anybody here got unique problems and unique situations? Uh, stop by to tell you God says I got an RSP for you. I, I have a specialized program uh, fit just for you, when you read IEPs, no two are ever alike. There are some students uh, who need help with behavior. I 
stop by to tell the church this morning there are some Christians uh, who still need help with uh, behavior problems. Uh, there are other students uh, who can't seem to comprehend uh, without the help of a power pro. I stop by to let the church know uh, that we got some Christians uh, who need some power professionals uh, and they're called preachers. Uh, they're called teachers. Uh, they're called is individualized. Aren't you glad that when you find yourself in trouble, uh, that everybody don't have to know your business? Uh, God's got a specialized plan uh, just for you and I to, to help us work out some things. And, and so I stopped by this morning to let you know God has uh, an RSP. Uh, but unlike in the school system, uh, uh, it's not just a, a, a resource specialist program, uh, but I stopped by to tell you this morning uh, that the R is uh, for refuge, uh, and S is uh, for strength, uh, and P is for help. Uh, it may not be for everybody this morning, but I decree and declare this word is uh, for somebody who need uh, RSP in the spirit. Uh, and so the psalmist writes uh, in verse number one, uh, he says to us, uh, God is, not might be, not sometime, but God is. That means present, always is, uh, never changes. Uh, God is uh, our refuge uh, and strength uh, and present help in time of trouble. Uh, what I found out uh, about God as a refuge, uh, it means he's simply a shelter uh, against harm. Uh, we face dangers every day, seen uh, and unseen. Uh, but uh, this Psalms reminds us uh, that God uh, is a refuge. Uh, he's one who will uh, provide safety uh, if we take shelter uh, in him. Uh, our relationship with him uh, will be secured. Uh, we'll be covered. Uh, no wonder Proverbs 18 and 10 says the name uh, of the Lord is a fortified tower. Uh, the righteous run to it and are saved. Uh, the rich man trusted in his own wealth uh, and his city and his high wall. But to the believer, uh, Proverbs says the name of the Lord is a fortified tower. Another scripture says it's a high tower. Uh, and it says that when uh, the righteous need some help uh, and need some shelter uh, and need a refuge, uh, the righteous run to it uh, and uh, they are saved. Uh, anybody here know that God knows how to be a shelter uh, in the times of storm? How many know today that Satan is walking around seeking whom uh, he may devour? Uh, good God uh, Almighty. Uh, I, I come here, Job. Uh, I believe it was in the first chapter of Job where Satan attacks uh, Job's character. Anybody here today character been attacked, under attack, in attack? I, I stopped by to tell you God says, 
I'm your refuge. You can come to me and find shelter. How do I know? The Bible says that Satan was going to and fro on the earth and walking back and forth. And, and the Lord said to Satan, uh, have you considered uh, my servant Job uh, that there's none like him in all the earth and blameless and upright one who fears the Lord. Look at what Satan says to God. So Satan answered God uh, and said, does Job uh, fear God for anything? Uh, have you not made a hedge uh, around him Put a hedge around his household. Put a hedge around all that he has on every side. I, if I wanted to touch him, I could. I stopped by to tell the church that God is still our refuge. And around you and I and our families and our households and everything that we have, God says, I put a refuge around it. I put a shelter around it. And where Satan said, you blessed uh, the works of his hands and his possessions uh, have increased. Uh, but now, uh, stretch out your hand uh, and touch all he has and he'll surely curse you. Uh, we know the story of Job. He lost a lot, but in the end, he got it all back. But the point of the text today is that God is our refuge. Uh, a refuge is nothing but shelter in the time of trouble. Stop by, stop by to tell the church he's, he's got uh, an individualized lesson plan for us today. He's got an RSP. He has one on standby, and that R is, he is our refuge. He is. Uh, Psalms 42 and 5, David says, I cried out to you, O Lord, uh, you are my refuge. Uh, you're my portion uh, in the land uh, of the living. God, uh, that is, it was David uh, who was on the run for his life. And he found a place of solace uh, in a, a cave. Uh, I believe the cave was called a doulum. Uh, when you have time, go to 1 Samuel 22 and you'll find what David was fleeing for Saul for his life. Because Saul was trying to kill him. And it was there in the cave uh, that he planned his his revenge, his attack, so that when Saul would come upon him, uh, had about 400 men that joined him, but sometimes uh, God will put us in a cave if he have to protect us. I stop by to tell the church he's our refuge. You may not like where you're at right now, uh, but he's providing that hedge of protection around you and your family and your household and all that you have just like he did for Job uh, just like he did for David uh, he's the same God yesterday, today and the Bible says forevermore anybody here want God to be their refuge uh, an individualized plan uh, because some of us may say well we're not in any trouble uh, nobody's coming after me but I stop by to tell you if you just keep on living uh, if you ain't in any trouble right now, uh, you might be about to go through some trouble uh, or just came out of some. Uh, and when you look back, uh, the songwriter said, I wondered uh, how I got over. Uh, could it be uh, that when you went through, uh, God, our refuge, uh, put a hedge around you uh, and you made it out uh, some way, uh, somehow. Uh, and we know it was uh, the Lord uh, who did it. So I stopped by to tell the church uh, our RSP today is uh, God is uh, our refuge. Uh, but not only is he our refuge, uh, the psalmist says uh, in the same verse, uh, Psalm number 46, uh, verse number 1, uh, God is not only uh, our refuge, uh, he's not only our shelter, uh, he's not only that hedge, uh, he's not only the cave uh, that provides the shelter, uh, but God is strength. Uh, some of us are trying to handle things uh, on our own, uh, but God's strength, uh, according to the biblical definition, uh, it says it's resident power. Uh, 
good God Almighty. Uh, when we have God's strength, uh, it doesn't come and go. Uh, resident me, it remains. Uh, it dwells uh, in your house, uh, on the job, uh, in the street, with all your other activities. Uh, God says, I've got some strength uh, that can take you uh, all day long. Uh, no matter what you may be facing, uh, he is. Uh, our strength. Uh, the Bible says uh, God gives us the power uh, we need uh, to endure hardship uh, as uh, we serve him. Uh, fight spiritual battles. Uh, he gives us strength uh, to resist temptation. Uh, he gives us strength uh, to bear up under persecution. Uh, in fact, uh, it was Paul who wrote uh, when I am weak, uh, then he shows himself strong. Uh, anybody here uh, need the strength of the Lord uh, to make it through uh, the troubles that you're facing? Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, the Bible says uh, in Zechariah uh, 4 and 6 uh, that when uh, he had a vision, uh, the Bible says uh, it was not by might uh, nor by power, uh, but by my spirit, uh, says the Lord. Uh, I stopped by to tell the church uh, that God got some supernatural strength uh, and it's not in mind, uh, it's not in power, uh, but it's by his spirit uh, and said the Lord, uh, he's a man uh, and he cannot lie. Uh, God's got enough strength uh, to fight every battle uh, that comes upon us. Uh, good God uh, Almighty, uh, it was time uh, to rebuild the temple uh, and they needed uh, a rain of word uh, that they had the strength uh, to build it up. Uh, and so God sent the prophet uh, and he said uh, to Zerubbabel, uh, it's not going to be your mind uh, and it's not going to be your power, uh, but if you could get my strength, uh, you'll be able to uh, to rebuild this temple, uh, good God uh, Almighty, uh, look at God uh, giving him might, uh, giving him power, uh, but most of all, uh, giving him his spirit, uh, the word might, uh, in Zechariah 4 and 6, uh, is translated uh, army, uh, force, uh, ability, uh, and efficiency, uh, good God Almighty, uh, when God uh, gives us his strength, uh, his might uh, comes with it, uh, we are a mighty army, uh, a force to be reckoned with, uh, we have the ability uh, to do all things uh, in Christ uh, who strengthens us, uh, he is uh, sufficient, uh, it is the efficiency of Christ uh, that causes us uh, to triumph. But the word power uh, implies uh, force, uh, firm resolve, uh, dynamic strength, uh, resoluteness. Uh, stop by uh, to tell the church uh, that when we get this dunamis power, uh, good God Almighty, uh, we can conquer uh, anything. Uh, no wonder uh, he told them, uh, I'm always with you. Uh, my force uh, be with you. Uh, you relied uh, on yourself. Uh, you relied uh, on family. Uh, but this dynamic strength uh, that God is offering us uh, is nothing than uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, good God uh, Almighty. Uh, aren't you glad uh, that the Holy Spirit is here uh, to strengthen us uh, and to guide us uh, and to lead us uh, into all truth and righteousness. Uh, when it Jesus uh, who told the disciples, uh, if I go away, uh, it's to your advantage, uh, it's to our advantage. Uh, for if I go, uh, I won't leave you comfortless, uh, but the helper, uh, he'll come. Uh, anybody here uh, need the help of God uh, to help you overcome uh, whatever it is you're dealing with? Uh, if it's famine, uh, 
if it's finance, if it's health, if it's family, if it's church folk, he'll give you the strength to overcome. And so I stop by to tell the church that God has an RSP for us. He has the resource. Yes, he does. He has a specialized program. It's called refuge. It's called strength. And his program will give us some help. But the help he offers is not temporary. But the Bible says he gives us ever-present help. Anybody here need the present help of the Lord? Operating in your life. God is at hand. According to Psalms 145, 18. He's not far from us. But he's nearby to help us in every task that's been assigned to us. No matter what it looks like. Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough to keep. God uh, from helping us. Uh, ain't no hospital uh, big enough. Uh, ain't no lawyer uh, equipped enough. Uh, God said, uh, I am uh, your present help uh, when you're in uh, your time of trouble. Uh, good God uh, Almighty. Uh, I'm getting ready uh, to go to my seat. Uh, but somebody need to know uh, that this present help uh, that God in the program there's nothing you can do about it nowhere you can go for Psalms 139 and 7 say where can I go from your spirit aren't you glad that it's not a physical presence but the spirit of the Lord can reign everywhere at the same time good God Almighty, where can I go and you're not there? And where can I flee from your presence? The psalmist helps us. He said, if I ascend to heaven, I look up and you are there. Stephen's my witness when they're stoned in the death. The Bible says he looked up toward heaven, saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God the Father. Where can I go? And you're not there. Good God Almighty, if I send to heaven, you are there. And if I make my bed in hell, behold, you're there. Listen to the rich man down in hell and the poor beggar up in heaven. He was having a conversation with the poor man and Abraham. He said, send somebody back to tell my family. They said if they won't believe the prophets, they won't believe me. Where can I go? And God's not there. If I go to heaven, he's right there. If I go to the abyss, he right there. If I take some wings like a morning dove and fly away to the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. Your right hand it will hold me. If I say I'm in darkness, you're there. In the darkest place, it becomes light. Indeed, the darkness uh, can't hide from you. Uh, so uh, where can I go? Uh, and God's not there. Uh, the song is right. Uh, I believe it. Uh, do you? Uh, that God is uh, I ever present help uh, in a time, uh, in a time of need. Uh, good God uh, Almighty. Uh, no wonder Paul wrote uh, in Hebrews. Uh, he said, the Lord uh, is my helper, uh, and I will not uh, be afraid. Uh, but what can 
of need. Stop by to remind the church of something you already knew that God has an RSP fit just for you and fit just for my situation. Individualized plans. He's our strength. He's our present help. He's our refuge. He's our resource specialist. With a program outlined for our situations. And today, that's good news. For the believer, you're in the classroom with Jesus. He's got your education plan. Right. Right. Yes, specialized yes. program yes. in the resource room. And I extend the invitation to somebody who says, Preacher, I'm not in the room. We invite you to come to Jesus right. just now. Right. Why? Because God has promised to be our refuge and strength because he's our ever-present help in time of trouble. Those who belong to him can commit their way to him and take rest in this saying. We can be still and know that he's God. Right. So we extend the invitation to someone who doesn't know the God who has this specialized program we got the resources for what we need. He said, Preacher, how do I get it? John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world, he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believe it in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If you're here today or watching by way of social media, we offer Christ to you. If you turned away and in a backslidden state, and decided not to follow Jesus, we invite you to come back and to the graces of God. There is still room at the cross for you. We invite you. He said, Preacher, I'm saved. I'm walking in righteousness, just looking for a home. We send an invitation to come here with us at St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church. With everyone today willing to come. God says, I have an RSP for you. I got refuge. I got strength. I'm your present help with everyone. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you for our lesson plan. Curtail just for us. We thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you that you're our ever-present help and we don't have to fear. We give you praise today. We give you honor. And we give you glory. In the precious and matchless name of Jesus. We pray and ask these blessings. And every believer I'll say amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Lord.
years. Hallelujah and awesome. God, keep us in the valley. Anybody been in the valley? And it kept you. Rain with you on the mountain top. And as you go up, it gets lonely at the top. Good God Almighty. But he's awesome. Hallelujah. And so we shift gears here. We shift, we shift in the spirit as we get ready to prepare for the Lord's Supper. Amen. And so we make the solicitation that you that do truly and are earnestly repent of your sins are in love and in charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from him.